and drive change through trusted, influential research and rich Welcome to City Club of Portland's Friday Forum. I'm Lisa Watson, president of City Club. For more than 100 years, the City Club of Portland is where civic-minded people come together to make Portland and Oregon a better place for everyone to live, work, and explore. We're gathered today at the Sentinel Hotel and welcoming all of you joining us via KGW's website, Facebook feed, or news app, X-Ray FM, or on Open Signals community media television stations. I want to wish a special welcome to our students here today from Jefferson High School as part of the Civic Scholars Program. We're so glad that you're joining us today to talk about higher education and specifically how PSU can better serve Portland and the region. The generous support of City Club's media partners and corporate sponsors enables us to put on the state's best civic programs week after week. I'd like to recognize City Club's fall sponsors, Avangrid Renewables and Morell Inc., and I'd like to thank First Interstate Bank for their ongoing support. Please show our appreciation to everyone who's helped make today possible. Today, we welcome Dr. Ramat Shireshi, the new president of Portland State University. 
President Shireshi faces big challenges and opportunities in his new role. Portland State is Oregon's second largest university system with more than 28,000 students. It draws a diverse student population from Portland, throughout Oregon, and across the country, and it's in the heart of a world-class city. Despite all of these advantages, Portland State is often overshadowed by both public and private universities in our state. President Shireshi told the PSU campus newspaper, The Vanguard, I call myself a builder. At every university I've been, I have built great programs, colleges, and universities. So I feel that PSU is a university with all of the right ingredients and is poised to really become a great, what I call global urban university. That's what I'm aiming to push for. I think we're all looking forward to hearing what President Shireshi is hoping to build in the coming years. Interviewing him today is Tim Nesbitt. Mr. Nesbitt is a policy public policy consultant and past chair of Oregon's Higher Education Coordinating Commission. A former labor leader in Oregon, he is a contributing columnist for the Oregonian and served as an advisor to Oregonians for high school success in the successful campaign for Measure 98 in 2016. Please join me in welcoming them both. Good afternoon. It is truly a pleasure to be here today. Thank you for everyone's contributions to making PSU the university that is today. I want to warn you, I'm an automation engineer, and for many years a faculty, which means for the next 55 minutes, I'm going to tell you about artificial intelligence, robotics, and... Did I scare you all? <laughs> okay, now I'm gonna be more serious though. I was drawn to Portland State University because it's a great university with the mission of access. It is in a great city, Portland. Portland and PSU are so intertwined, and it makes it unique. Although I'm new to Portland, I want to add my condolences for the passing of former Mayor Vera Katz. Beyond, <laughs> beyond her visionary leadership of the city, Mayor Katz was also a member of our extended family at Portland State, so we do miss her. Let me tell you how PSU is today and what will be pushed for to become, and how you as citizens of Portland can help in reaching our goals. PSU is for everyone. We are the most affordable university in Oregon, and we intend to stay that way. We educate nearly 28,000 students a year. 20,000 of them are Oregonians. We serve more first-generation students, more students of color, and higher percentage of women than any other university in Oregon. <laughs> but today, the role of Portland State as an access university is at risk. Oregon's state funding per student is among the lowest in the United States. And even worse for PSU, we get the lowest contribution from a state per student than any other public university. This disinvestment in higher education is a serious challenge for our state and for the future of our state. Students have asked me not to give up in finding creative ways for the community to contribute to the higher education. And I have told them, believe me, as an engineer, as a builder, I won't give up that easily. Because I'm a person 
whose life was transformed by higher education. I truly appreciate PSU as students and what they go through. I was the first in my family to go to college. In my native country, all high school seniors take a day-long college entrance exam. Only the students who have scored in the top 10% get the opportunity to go to college. I was one of the lucky 10%. Here I am today, a president of a great university, able to have my two kids, my son and daughter, have been gone through college and start their profession in the field of medicine. I'm proud to share that my daughter, she's a second year surgery resident at OHSU. Therefore, access matters. Think about where I started and where I am today. Think about what I was able to do for my kids. That's what the meaning of access. So, part of the reason we launched the four-year free program is to provide that access. We promise high-achieving Pell Grant eligible students that we will cover the balance of their tuition after federal and a state aid for the full four years. 525 of those students from Oregon started their education at PSU this fall. Let me talk briefly about expansion of research. I know from my experience, developing patents and taking them into a technology, that is a great way to really fuel the economy of the state of the city. Remember our students, the ones who are the first in their family attending college, the parents, those who are a student of colors, they also deserve to have research opportunity. I want to invite you to reimagine PSU as a home for the kind of cutting edge research that transforms the economy of Portland and Oregon and our nation. Because we can get there and we need you to help us to get there. In collaborations with our faculty, we plan to create centers of excellence that will really transform research and opportunity for economic development here in Portland and for the estate. So what I'd like to leave you with is expect me to reach out to you seeking new partnerships. I have benefited from partnerships, especially partnership with businesses. Count on me to come and ask for your support to launch our co-op program and Thank you for inviting me to join you today. I appreciate it very much. So for our broadcast audi audience, this is the City Club of Portland's Friday Forum. I'm Tim Nesbitt, and I'm speaking with Dr. Ramat Shureshi, the new president of Portland State University. Dr. Shureshi, uh, you talked about uh, Portland's, uh, PSU's uh, relationship with Portland. There's only one Portland state in our university system, and there's only one university in our system whose motto speaks to serving the city. Sure. Um, with that in mind, let's talk about what that means for students, mm -hmm. because I think there's a difference between waiting passively for students to show up at your uh, campus and reaching out to our K-12 schools, our high schools, our community colleges to make sure you're creating pathways for students and for their success in your university. Uh, how, how, do you, how do you see those pathways developing uh, sure. in the future? True. So you are absolutely right. Uh, we need to reach out to our students. My goal is to reach as far as middle schools 
and try to put together a plan for them that even at middle school, they can see themselves going, not only finishing high school, but looking into going to community colleges or coming to a four-year uh, program that we offer at PSU. The way we are doing it is by partnering with high schools and also with community colleges. I had the opportunity of having presidents of four of the community colleges coming and meeting uh, at PSU. We had an open dialogue and of course, I used what is left of me from New York. I said, what can PSU do so all of your students transfer to PSU? And believe me, they gave us some excellent suggestions. And that's what we're going to work on, including the dual enrollment so students. And that's what I want to see happening even all the way to middle school. Students from that stage. They see themselves as a PSU students by having dual enrollment. The other one is that, as we have done already, and I know even at the Jefferson uh, High School that we have uh, some of their students represented here, we already have the opportunity for them to take 12 credits of PSU credits while they are in high school, and then they can transfer all of those completely. My goal is that with partnership with community colleges and with high schools, be able to provide a plan of a study so students don't need to even worry about, do I need to transfer? What part of it is going to be transferred? What courses I want to take? This is by doing that, we eliminate the obstacles that the students would have. The other part that I want to mention is we are planning to introduce a co-op program at PSU, which means students will study for part of the year, then they will go and work for part of the year. And the salary they earn, they use it to pay and continue their education. This is going to go for the whole undergraduate period. So not only they finish with a great degree, but they also have had the opportunity of at least two years of work experience, which differentiates them from everybody else. With that, they have a true access and pathway without worrying about the financial support. We want to stand in front of students and their parents and families and say, coming to PSU, will cost you only a dime. Well, uh, financial support is important, we know. But there was a time in higher education, back in my years in college, when you'd often hear in the first, on the first day of class, look left, look right, one of you won't be here at the end of the, at the, end of the term. That attitude has changed. Mm -hmm. I think we realize in our uh, colleges and universities now that students need a lot of support, especially yes. when you're serving first-generation students. Sure. So how would you combine those kinds of supports with the financial support programs you've sure. described? Sure. So uh, let me start with an example. Uh, when you think about it, at least at PSU, more than uh, our athletic students they have a retention rate of more than 90%. They have a graduation rate of close to 90%. You ask yourself why. When you think about it is that, whether it's at PSU or other places, there are coaches, mentors, advisors that keep track of them. So if they are late for a practice, they will be on the call for them. What I'm getting at is, in order to make sure students that come to PSU are successful, we got to make sure that we provide them the mentorship and the advising they need. And it's not just the academic side. There are so many of them that have personal issues, family issues, and we want to address those. And we already have a great group of counselors will be looking into expanding those. 
but it's the support system that needs to be in place, especially for those who are first generation, especially those that they come and they may not see any role models that looks like them. That's where we need to help them and to make sure that we address their needs. You also talked about the funding challenges, mm -hmm. uh, given the level of state funding and how the dollars are divided. But over the last decade, that's been a chronic issue, more than a decade, two decades. And we've sometimes heard in response to those challenges, people say that PSU is stretched too thin trying to be both a great access university and a urban re, um, research university. How do you, do you see a tension between those two? Uh, something that forces a prioritization of one sure. over the other? Sure. Uh, so this is the question, that, Tim, that I have been asked a few times. And uh, to be honest, this question surprises me because access and being a research university are two different things. What, if, if we are not careful, we may be asking that if we have students from low-income families, they don't deserve to have access to research. That's why I say that research and access are two separate issues. Every university requires to be really working, offering classes, programs that are state-of-the-art. And to be able to offer that high-quality program, you do need your faculty to be active in research. And so I want PSU to be very active in research and a scholarship. And by the way, in spite of what may or may not be out there, since last year, PSU faculty brought $60 million of external research to the university. Guess where that 60 million goes? It is a great portion of it in support of the students that will be engaged in those research activities. So access, we're gonna work on it, and with especially the co-op program, we should be able to hopefully address the issue in terms of access and affordability. But research, it's something that we wanna expand, that's why I want to establish at least a half a dozen centers of excellence. These would be research centers that address some of the critical issues of Portland, Oregon, and our nation. To give you an example, I know for everybody in Portland, homelessness is a huge concern. But if you think about it, the homelessness, one of the elements of that is the lack of education. And so we want to have a center that actually does research studies on how to prevent future homelessness. The second is we want to have, in partnership with OHSU, a center that will be addressing residences for elderly, and those with disabilities. You know, everybody talks about automation, but automation should improve the quality of life. So we wanna create a center of excellence that focuses in that area. Let me mention one more. Another center that we are thinking about in establishing is smart manufacturing. To think about it, the manufacturing that's in Oregon, they need to have ideas about what is coming next. Whether it's aerospace, whether it is uh, sportswear, whether it is uh, electronics, whether it is the uh, residences, high rises that are environmentally sustainable, these are the type of things that in these research centers, we want PSU faculty to really do a state of the art. And there are multiple benefits, not only the classes they offer, 
students will benefit from the results of those researchers. But at the same time, these are part of being an engine for economic development of Portland and Oregon. Well, on that theme, you um, come to a university which has long um, trumpeted sustainability as a major theme and focus of activity. When we talked a couple of weeks ago, you took that further and talked about resilience, mm -hmm. anticipating more extreme weather events and, uh, and uh, natural uh, challenges. Can you speak to that as sure. another area that sure. you'd like to see uh, sure. uh, developed? Absolutely. Um, sustainability is important to all of us. But if you just think about sustainability, even if you go and Google sustainability, you see so many universities that talk about sustainability. What we want is to really take the angle that is for Portland and for Oregon. And we want to look at the issues. Just imagine uh, all of these natural disasters, all of these wildfires, what it's doing to all of us. What we would like is to have our sustainability center to really focus on resiliency and even how you can predict and prevent. So we have a group of our faculty that they have been working uh, and doing research heavily supported by major federal agencies on living in extreme environments. Uh, to give you an example, we have one of our faculty that's studying a fish. This kind of fish will sleep for six months without having any oxygen. And so the question is, how come that fish can do it? We better learn what is inside that gene and DNA so that when we face some of these extreme uh, natural or even man-made disasters, do we have ways of being able to survive and continue? So that's the issue of res resiliency. And so we want to make Portland to be the role model for a city that addresses the issue of natural disaster and how it makes itself a resilient city. That's part of what we want okay. to see in that center. So shifting back to um, what we talked about at the outset, there's only one Portland state in the university system of Oregon, but we have the U of O here in Portland with some programs. We have OSU here, we have OHSU, and we have Oregon Tech in not, not too many miles south sure. of here. Uh, and we're in a system now that is less top-down in terms of direction from state policymakers, and where each of the universities has its own board. Um, so when we look at the pro proliferation of programs being offered by PSU and the other universities, is that going to be better for students, but also more of a challenge in terms of the budgets uh, for, for, for PSU and the other universities? Sure, sure. Uh, it's a great point you are raising. Uh, what we have done is, uh, I actually, going back to what I said earlier, that uh, I have benefited significantly from collaborations and partnerships. So I never forget back in August, uh, it was my first month here, we had the uh, council of all of the seven presidents. Mm -hmm. And I told them, I want to partner. And to give you an example, we have had so many meetings among the seven presidents talking about how to coordinate, to create synergy even to the point of if a university is going to uh, plan a new program, it's better to first discuss it with the others to eliminate to some degree duplication and competing with each other. And uh, we have put together a good deal of open dialogue. So what I'm getting at is that from one hand, you do want to provide opportunities for students no matter which part of Oregon they are from. So you always have some degree of duplications, but in some of the other specific areas, what we are hoping to do is that to have an open dialogue and try to collaborate rather than to compete. 
I had a great, not being too a specific, great dinner last night with uh, Mike Schill, uh, president of U of O. Besides talking about the basketball game that this was the night before, uh, but we talked about so many of these issues to address it, and we really are working. And the same thing with uh, President Ed Ray. So we are working together to address what you are raising. We have to be together, otherwise we won't be able to really move Oregon. Okay, thanks. I want to uh, again uh, remind our broadcast viewers and listeners that this is the City Club of Portland's Friday Forum. I'm Tim Nesbitt, and I'm speaking with Dr. Ramat Shureshi, the new president of Portland State University. Back to the, the issue of financing. Mm -hmm. um, your predecessor left you a gift under the Christmas tree that uh, uh, carries the tag, do not open into 2019. I'm referring to <laughs> An agreement that was reached in the wake of a proposal to establish a payroll tax to support Portland State in the metro area in 2016, which eventually uh, was withdrawn when an agreement was signed with our business leaders committing to develop, I think the language is to develop and execute a plan to raise $25 million annually in new money for Portland State beginning in 2019. Have you peeked inside that box to see if it's really there? <laughs> uh, well, whether I wanted to peek or not, I have been asked the question so many times. In fact, in my first week, a group of our students came and visited with me and they said, Ramad, don't forget, we don't want to lose $25 million a year that's coming to PSU. And of course, I said, wow, $25 million, who is giving it? Uh, I understand uh, about that. And what we have done is actually, over the course of uh, the last four months that I have been here, I probably have met with uh, at least 100 uh, business leaders to talk about the ways that is more meaningful to support PSU. We, do we need this support? Absolutely. I can even give you a specific in terms of financials that without that support, it would be hard to achieve the goals we have, and it would be hard to be an access university. But the angles that we are talking about is first and foremost, if we get enough co-op positions from the business community so our students can actually go through that, in my opinion, that's the best way to, for businesses to support PSU. The second is I want the businesses, industries, companies to think about if they, uh, what is a university? A university is pool of intellectual talent. Very few companies can afford to have between two to 5,000 PhDs, but PSU has them. I want the business folks to take advantage of this pool of talent. So I want to see a lot more R&D projects supported by businesses, because what they do, it's not that they pay for the uh, faculty's time. The faculty time is already part of the budget. It provides us opportunity to really take that and support our students, not only in terms of tuition, but in terms of research opportunity, study abroad, things that opens up their mind. So uh, the third area is that we need to, as part of establishing these research centers, we need to hire faculty because we have top quality faculty, but we need to have more of them. That's another way that businesses could support us in terms of endowments that would enable us to bring top-notch experts. Just think about what OHSU was able to do to create the Cancer Institute and the top-notch uh, experts that they were able to do. Want to be able to do the same thing at PSU for these centers of excellence. So all I'm saying is that I want to work with the business community and come up with other ways 
that are more meaningful and mutually beneficial uh, to address the needs that PSU has. Okay. Somewhat related to that, and um, this would apply not just to Portland State, but to uh, all of our uh, post-secondary institutions around the country. Uh, as costs have risen for students and their families, there's been increasing attention paid to what's known as the value proposition of post-secondary education, and a lot more attention paid to measures like uh, salary and income immediately after graduation. Um, is that a good measure, do you think, or are there better ways to get to the goal of student success? Sure. Uh, I have been asked, Ramad, how would you say that your presidency has been successful? And I say that I want to get to the point that every student that graduates from PSU will say, you know, I got the education that I came here to get. And I want, when I talk with our alumni, to say, without the PSU education, I couldn't have been in the position that I'm today. Now, to get to those, it is true that some of the transformations we do for socioeconomic uh, uh, upwarding is important. To give you an example, so many of our students come to be exact, it's around 8,000 of them, come from families that make less than $20,000 a year for the whole family. But when they come to PSU upon graduation, if they graduate in the area of education, they get at least a 40,000 a year salary. If they graduate from our business school, their average salary is about 50,000. If they graduate from engineering program or sciences, now you are in the 60,000 range. So what we are offering is definitely this transformation that has financial benefit, but it's not the only measure. Keep in mind, it is the quality of education that they receive that's important. It is the opportunities that they would have. And educating them so that, as we all know, in this day and age, uh, we change jobs, and the new generation changes job every probably two, three years. What is important is to have the education that provides them that base that they can easily move from one job to the other or be able to not only attend or get attracted to the jobs here, but to the jobs around the globe. Because for many college graduates, the chances of their first job being in the U.S. is shrinking. Most likely, they end up being somewhere else. That's why I want to make sure that our students, before they finish their school, they have had three experiences. The first is a research experience. The second is a study abroad. Because when you go abroad, it really opens your mind. It gives you a different perspective that you may not have otherwise. And the third is the work experience. Because think about it. If all we do is graduate another one that is similar to so many others, they are not going to have any advantage in the market. But if we provide them with those experiences, they will be well sought after. That would be the success. That is the value proposition that I would like to see. Also, um, I wanted to go back to your opening remarks where you joked about your expertise. Uh, in um, not just engineering, but in robotics, artificial intelligence. And I saw you at the biz business summit uh, two Mondays ago, uh, and um, the afternoon program was all about the changes we can expect to see in our economy and in our workforce from these cutting edge technologies like artificial intelligence, robotics, mm -hmm. blockchain software. Sure. Um, from given your background, um, 
What changes do you see coming uh, to our economy, to our workforce, and how can PSU serve our students well sure. in, uh, in this new economy? Sure, sure. So it's interesting that it's, uh, for me, it's almost a deja vu. You know, back in the 80s, I was doing AI and smart systems, and, you know, at that time, not too many people were talking about that, that now. I hope it's not a fad, but let me tell you this. Automation is supposed to help improve the quality of life for all of us. And so when I'm talking about residences for elderly or disabled, that's where the automation could actually play a great deal. There's no question as part of sustainability that you may need to have a driverless mobility, urban uh, and cities. The reason is it cuts in terms of pollution, but what people forget about is that, think about all of the drones that fly in Afghanistan. They don't fly by themselves. There's a huge group of technical folks sitting probably somewhere in Texas and monitoring, commanding those. What I'm getting at is that automation improves the quality of life, but also brings new job opportunities. And what is our responsibility is to make sure that we provide that continuous education so it doesn't just stop at the bachelor degree or master degree, it's a lifelong education so that the workforces are always ready for what the automation and artificial intelligence brings. That includes how we offer our programs, our degrees, our educational system, because we all know, and I have heard that a zillion times, that higher education is still the model of two, three hundred years ago. Aren't we going to change that? And so that's where, and we may not be talking about that. There's a great deal of change that has already taken place. But we want to make sure that, for example, if somebody is interested because they have a work that they need to do, no matter where they are, they be able to have access to PSU education without fighting the traffic on the bridge to get to PSU. Last of all, this will have to be quick because we're going to be taking questions from the sure. audience shortly, but a lot of ferment at the national level in terms of tax politics and politics affecting our immigrant students and the dreamers. Uh, given the lack of action at the congressional level on that issue, how is PSU prepared to protect its dreamers and its immigrant students? True. So I, uh, some of you may know, I really understand the dreamers. And because of the experiences I had gone through myself back in the early 80s. And uh, because of that, I have made a commitment, and PSU community has made the commitment that we are going to do our best to provide the education, whether it's to dreamers or to any other students that are at PSU. I know there will be some constraint that we may face because of uh, federal uh, policies, uh, but we are all working together with the other universities. I, uh, had a, uh, I started my day with a phone conversation with a university in California with their president, addressing the issues that what does the tax bill is going to do to higher education? There are so many issues that people may not understand, but it's going to make it harder for universities and for somebody like PSU to be an access university. So we're going to do, we are committed, and we're going to do our best to make sure that they are supported. So uh, we will take questions uh, from City Club members and from our students from Jefferson High School at the microphone. 
Uh, before then, again, I want to remind our broadcast audience that this is the City Club of Portland's Friday Forum. I'm Tim Nesbitt, and I'm speaking with Dr. Ramat Shureshi, the new president of Portland State University. Uh, as uh, questioners come to the microphone, I do want to ask one more. Sure. And as in the, in the time you spent with the Jefferson students mm -hmm. uh, before the program began, you talked about your own life mm -hmm. as a student from Iran. and. Sure. Uh, and you referred to the crisis of the 1980s for Iranian students here. Can you give us just a little bit more of your uh, background as to where, you, where you've taught, where you've studied sure. and where you've taught? Sure, sure. So I, uh, I was the first in my family to go to college. Uh, and you can imagine, it was a huge step for me. And uh, so I did my undergraduate back in Iraq. This was after making it in the top 10% that could go to college. And I have to say, I was lucky enough to uh, score so high that I received my four years of uh, scholarship to go through undergraduates. Then I had the opportunity that if I was able to get admissions from one of the top 10 universities in US, I would have received a scholarship to come. And so it was up on me to try to, and I won't bore you with what it took for me from somebody with that family to get admissions to go to MIT. Then the part that I say that I understand our students is that halfway through my education, uh, we had the whole change back in the country. And that scholarship has stopped. And it's like all of a sudden, you are told you have no money. And there was also the issue of the, uh, uh, whether or not Iranian students were gonna be deported. So I can maybe someday write a book about the experiences that you go through. But as I said to the uh, students, the key is to not give up. Stay with your goals. Life is never easy. You have all kinds of ups and downs. But don't give up. You will work hard. You don't get the things easy. You have to work hard, but you will get to your goal. Thank you. We have uh, questioners at the microphone, sir. Good afternoon. My name is Bill Bowling. I'm a City Club member, and uh, I appreciate your comments about access. I'd like you to say a few words about how you think of developing graduate programs. Mm. Thank you. So the graduate programs, this is part of uh, establishing those centers of excellence. When you expand in your research, I have had the experience that typically you cannot bring graduate students and ask them to pay for their college or graduate education. They are either supported by the company businesses that they are working for, or you, meaning the university, has to be in a position to offer either teaching assistantship or research assistantships. And so by establishing these centers of excellence, and we have some, of, uh, some great examples. Look at our transportation center. It's one of five centers in the country. During the last 10 years, our transportation center Thanks to the leadership, I see Professor Jennifer Dill here. Jennifer, would you stand up so everybody would see? <laughs> that center has been able to attract $29 million. This is how we would be able to build and expand, and that's why these centers are important to expand our graduate education. Thank you. Next questioner. I'm Leif Gregory. I'm at Jefferson High School. And my, Great. you kind of touched on this a bit, but not much. And I was looking at the student body of PSU, and it's 60% white. And I was wondering why you think PSU is lacking a bit 
of the di di diversity and what are some specific things you can do to create more diversity? Sure, sure. Uh, great question and I appreciate it, especially coming from uh, uh, you as uh, high school uh, students. Uh, interestingly enough, uh, just think about that PSU is the most diverse university, I'm talking about four-year university in the state of Oregon which says all of us have really a challenge ahead. But when you look at, uh, just look at the PCC, the Portland Community College, and the students they have there, it's what we want is for those students to not only be successful at, whether it's PCC, Montwood, and so forth, but come to PSU and to bring that diversity that we are missing. But there's another key element for students, for diverse students, for students of minority, they need to see role models. So that's why what we plan to do is to really do our best that whether we are hiring faculty, whether it's a staff, we want to make sure we hire role models for the demographics of the students that we're going to have because they can understand their needs better than others they may do. So it is a challenge, but it's something that we are working on it. And I'm delighted that at least PSU is ahead of everybody else. Thank you. Next questioner. Uh, Jim Zarin, a member of City Club. Uh, welcome to City Club. Glad you're here. Uh, one of the first questions that Tim had asked you, he mentioned uh, the sort of tagline or motto of Portland State about let knowledge uh, serve the city. And in that regard, I've apparently only been here since August, but you may be aware or may not be aware that there's sort of a slow rumbling in the sort of public policy world of the metro area that we've got some significant problems about transportation. You mentioned homelessness, affordable housing, um, uh, mental health, et cetera, you go on. And I'm wondering if you can maybe say a little more about how PSU may help uh, people who are concerned about this, not only in the public sector, but also in the nonprofit world, to bring all that expertise that you have uh, in the faculty and in your graduate programs, et cetera, to help this region figure out how we catch up sure. to a lot of the other cities and regions in the West Coast that are really ahead of us. Sure, okay. sure. Thank you. Uh, great question. So we are actually uh, are, uh, devoting 2018 to be a special year at PSU. Every month, we're going to take a theme for that month, and we are organizing events for the public to come and discuss and create an opportunity for PSU community, students, faculty, staff, and the public to address some of these uh, challenges that we all are facing. But we are already doing some of the work. I want to mention another effort. Uh, we have uh, Dr. David Banksberg, who is sitting here. David is the uh, dean of our joint school of public health. That's a joint uh, school between OHSU and PSU. But he's also working with the mayor on the issue of homelessness. And I hope you get a chance to hear him talking about the homelessness issue. It has several elements. One of them is actually the health issues that the homeless have and how we should address those. So this is one example, but there are several examples that we are already doing but what we want to do is to create an environment that there is a lot more dialogue between the city and PSU to hear more and address the issues. But keep in mind that we got to work together to address it. It's not the issue that PSU can do it on its own. It's, again, part of that partnership to do. Okay. Another question? Kurt Wavering, uh, member. Uh, Paul Krugman today in the New York Times called the current tax bill dreadful. Um, it has two programs which are going to be cut unless it's changed. One is CHIP, that is uh, 
money for student, um, I'm sorry, young people. Um, and the other one is uh, tax deductions for uh, college uh, um, in tuition and payments. What's your take on it? Uh, so, the, as I mentioned earlier, uh, the, this tax bill is going to bring a number of challenges uh, to higher education, as well as other, it's not just higher education, but uh, all of the presidents of the, especially the public and land grant universities, we have written to our uh, folks in Washington, informing them and alerting them about what these are going to do to students, especially, and overall to higher education. Let me give you another example. We are counting going back to how are we going to finance and make uh, PSU truly an access. Part of it is through philanthropic development. But by increasing the floor for the tax uh, deduction or tax-free philanthropic donation, that also hits us very hard. But the part that is really of a huge concern is to have tax on tuition. This hits the students harder than anybody else and makes the access to be even a more challenging issue. So uh, we'll see, we are doing collectively. It's not just PSU, and it's not just the presidents in uh, universities in Oregon. Around the country, we have raised all of these issues, but we all are keeping our fingers crossed. We have time for one more short question and a brief answer. Okay. Great, thank you. Albert Lee, Portland Community College. Uh, Dr. Shureshi, do you believe that a four-year degree is a requirement for success mm -hmm. for a young Oregonian, or are there other avenues and pathways that can lead to success, including CTE and mm -hmm. AA programs at community colleges, sure. uh, apprenticeships with the trades, mm -hmm. and if so, how do you envision uh, partnerships and collaboration mm -hmm. with other developmental and educational institutions? Sure, sure. Wow. Uh, how much time do I have? We have about two minutes. <laughs> one minute. We have one minute. It okay. was a great question. Let me tell you this. There's no question. It's not one solution for all. In fact, I would actually can see that the students go through community colleges, then go and work, and then on their own decide, should I go and get the other two and get a bachelor degree? rather than being forced that, no, you got to do it, you got to do it. Because it's like everything else. Uh, it's the diversity in the educational offering that we have to appreciate and recognize. That's why it's important for us to uh, really collaborate with the uh, community colleges. But it's a great question. So we'll wrap up now, um, and I'll turn it back to Lisa Watson. Thank you. Uh, we are out of broadcast time, but before I say uh, thank you, I'd like to let Dr. Shireshi know as a proud PSU graduate, go Vikings, I'm really grateful to have you here. Thank you. We are at a broadcast time. We do have to stop for today. If this program's inspired you to join or contribute to City Club, please do so at the reg registration table as you leave today. This is Lisa Watson from City Club's Board of Governors. Thank you to our guests, and special thanks to Bobby Regan and the Friday Forum Committee for their hard work on the program. We're adjourned. Thank you.